All right, so here's part two, 3.1. Um, this is where we left off yesterday. So let's just pick up the lesson as we uh, finished yesterday. So this example two is talking about rational numbers and we're gonna place them in descending order. So one of the things we need to understand about order is descending, the opposite to that is ascending. And I don't know if you've heard these words before, but descending, think about the other words Am I still frozen? Thank you. Uh, think about the other words that have D in front of them, like de-escalate, right? Or devolve, or D. De it means to go kind of backwards or to go down. So descending order means we go from largest to smallest. Ascending, if you ascend a mountain or if you ascend to new heights in your life, ascending means to go up, okay? So ascending order means from smallest to greatest, okay? Now, uh, descending order. Um, place these rational numbers in descending order. Now, there's a number line to help you just place them, but we need to list them from greatest to smallest. If you just listed them on the number line, from left to right would be smallest to greatest. So we don't want to just leave them on the number line. I think this number line is just here to help you visualize sort of where these might be if we need to. Okay. So we have a mess of, <laughs> I shouldn't say a mess, numbers. All numbers are great, but we have a, a mess of different kinds of numbers, right? We have fractions, we have decimals, uh, we have repeating numbers here, uh, we have mixed fractions, positives, negatives, whole numbers, we have everything. So how do we go ahead and tackle this? Um, how do we find out which one is bigger than the other one? Um, what are some ideas? You guys have any ideas how we could kind of go about doing this? Yeah. You can either put them Okay, all right, so you could write all of them in decimals, maybe, and we can use our calculator for this too. You can write them in decimals, or you can build them up into fractions. I like it. Uh, decimals, decimals is gonna be pretty easy, honestly, because you just, uh, any fractions that you see, you just treat this line as a dividing sign, right? And then you get a decimal. So you could easily write these all in decimals. You could kind of place them on the number line, and so they see where they fit, so you don't you know, forget or whatever. Um, so that one would be really easy. If I asked you on a test to write all of these in fraction form and then to write them in order in fraction form, you could do that too. Uh, you could do that too, right? Like 0.5 would be pretty easy to write in fraction form. That would be 5 over 10. Or you know it as 1 over 2. So you could write these as fractions. 18 over 10 or 9 over 5, okay? The only thing is, is once you get the fractions, in order to compare them, you'd have to get the common denominators, right? That, that's the, kind of the big thing. So it would take a couple extra steps, but you could do it. You could write all of these in uh, fraction form. Now, negative 3.3 repeating, that might be the one, if you can see that, that might be the one that would be the trickiest to write in fraction form. Why don't we just focus on that for a second? What do you know about negative 3.3? Point three repeating. Is this, first of all, is this a rational number? Can I write it as a fraction? Yeah. I'm seeing some nods and some head shakes. Yeah. A rational number is a whole number, right? It uh, can be written as a ratio of two integers, we know that. Remember the very last thing that we said what a rational number is? It's either a terminating or a repeating decimal. So if this has a repeated part, then that's our indication that this can be written as a rational number. Now, I'm not sure how you want to tackle this, but do any of you know what 0.3 repeating is as a decimal? One three. Yes, it's, one, I don't know who said that, one over three, very good. So 0.3 repeating is exactly one third. That's gonna be very, very helpful, okay? That's really, really good. Um, there's, al there's also a shortcut, do you know about this? I don't know if I've talked to you about this, but if you have one single digit like this, repeating, 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 okay? And usually there's the three dots that they show to show that this repeats. Do you know that there's a, there's a shortcut to write this fraction? I don't know if I've told you about this yet, but hey, this is super cool. So ready for this? So if you have like a number like 0 0.3 repeating, you put this number over nine, and that's the fraction. And of course, this reduces to what you said, one third. So guess 
point four repeating is four over nine. Let's check it out. Let's check it out on our calculator. Four divided by nine is point four repeating. Seven repeating, point seven repeating is seven over nine. So that's a little shortcut for one digit repeating after the decimal. If there's numbers in front, not quite the same, but kind of. So let's, let's continue on here. We know that point three repeating is one third. So this would be negative three and one third, wouldn't it? Because negative three, point three repeating is like this decimal right here. It's negative three and one third. And things are disappearing on me again. So how do I turn this into a decimal? Do you remember mixed fraction? Three times three plus one is 10 over three. And with a negative in front there. Let's double check that to make sure we've done that right. Negative 10 divided by three is, look at that, negative 3.3 repeating. Okay, so that's really helpful to know. Uh, point 0.6 repeating is 6 over 9, or 2 thirds. Those are good ones to know. Okay. All right, so let's back it up here. So decimals are fine. I think we can change all these to decimals. That's really good. Um, I like that idea. So negative 3 quarters, do you have to do that on your calculator? Does anyone know this one as a decimal? 3 quarters. It's 0. 0.75. Yeah, do you know what I think of when I hear quarters? This is from when I was a kid, like when I was your age or younger, probably younger. Quarters, like quarters, the money, right? There's four of them in one dollar. It's one quarter and it's 25 cents. So if I have three quarters, how many cents do I have? I have 75 cents. So it's like $0.75, dollars, right? So I always remember quarters as actual you know, money quarters, okay? So 0 0.5, well, that's 0 0.5. It's on the positive side. So we know that's much greater than negative 0.75. Uh, negative 1.8, good. Negative 5 is a decimal already. Ooh, 7 over 3. What's 7 over 3? You could, you could do, just pump that into your calculator. Um, you, might, you might remember how to go from improper to proper fractions. So 7 over 3, there's actually two groups of 3 inside there, inside 7. Uh, two groups of three would be three, six. That would be six, right? And there's one left over. So that would be two and one third, right? So that's pretty cool, two and one third. Or 2.3 repeating. So this is 2.3 repeating. We have a positive two there. And we have a negative 3.3 .3 repeating. And one and three quarters, well, that's 1.75. Uh-oh. I think I got too much running on my computer. This uh, program is going to crash on me here. Because uh, numbers are magically disappearing. <laughs> this computer doesn't like math either. I don't know. All right, so um, from least to greatest. So descending order. No, that's from greatest to least, right? Descending. So what's the greatest, largest number on here? And you could put them on the number line. I won't take the time today. But what's the largest number? Can you see this list? What's the largest one? One, uh, 2.3 repeating? Yeah. Okay, so 2.3 repeating. Let me do this in black. And let's, I'm gonna do this now just to make sure. So here's A, the first one, okay. What's the next one in line, 2.3 repeating? A positive two looks like, okay, two. So that's gonna be here, B, good. And the next one, 1.75 looks like, right? So 1.75, that's C. Okay, good. We're, we're working down in order so far. Oh, 0 0.5, good. 0 0.5 is here, so that's going to be here. That's going to be the next one, D. Okay, so when we go to negatives now, we want the smallest number next, right? So negative 0 0.75, very good. That's the next one. Okay, negative 1.8, we're getting down here. Negative 3.3 .3 repeating, and negative 5. So, awesome, that's negative 1.8 there, negative 3.3, .3, and negative 5. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, in order, descending order. Looks like we've got that correct. Okay? So you could change them to decimals. No problem. That's nice and easy. You could also make them all fractions with a common denominator and then compare the numbers on top. That'll take a couple more steps, but you could do that as well if you were asked to. Okay, any questions? You guys understand that? Okay, good. Descending and ascending order. We need to know the difference there too. Okay. Identify a decimal between each pair of rational numbers. So let's take a look at these. Identify a decimal between each pair of rational numbers. So we could convert each of these to a decimal and then pick a decimal in between. That might be the best. Or we could make a fraction with common denominator. So let's do both ways. Here's the decimal way we'll do and the, um, the fraction way, okay? So we'll go over both of them. The decimal way would be to convert negative one half into a decimal. And I think you know that is negative 0 0.5. And negative one quarter as a decimal is, remember the quarters? Uh, uh, 0 0.25, correct. Okay, so there's the decimal one. Now, on the number line, negative 0.5 would be over here and negative 0.25 would be over here, so that's great. So we need to pick a number between these two, uh, or a decimal between these two. So let's see, I have 5 tenths here and I have 2 and a half tenths here, 2 tenths. So if you just focus on the tenths, you probably could just pick a number in between 2 and 5 right and just make sure that they have the same decimals uh, so we could pick 0. Point what what's between 2 and 5 yeah 0. 0.3 all right you could pick 0. 0.3 you could pick 0. 0.3 and you could put any number of numbers behind that if you want because that's going to be um, between 0. 0.3 and 0. 0.4 which will clearly be in this area negative question Yes, yes. You could take the lower number and put a number on the end of it to make it just slightly bigger. That's very good, yes. So we could pick, take 0.25 and you could just add another number because right now there's nothing showing. So it's assumed to be, there are assumed to be zeros after this. You see that? So when there's nothing showing, that's assumed to be just zeros. So if you add another number other than zero, like six, that's a little bit bigger than this one. Okay, very good. Yeah, you could do that too. All right, fraction way. The fraction way is to get a common denominator. So over here, it'd probably be pretty easy to get this fraction on the left to have a common denominator of four the same as the other one. All we'd have to do is times what? Two. Times two, good. And what you do to the bottom, you always have to do to the top to make sure it stays as the same type of fraction. So the fraction method would be, I'm gonna have negative two over four and negative one over four. Okay, now, boy, this is gonna be a bit tough because uh, I don't want decimals in my fraction, but you know, there's no other whole number or integer between one and two. So you could do a couple things, and you have an idea, right? Okay, so why don't we go with your idea first. What would you do? Yep, numbers, one number. So you'd add one to this one? No, so since um, we're trying to find one number, we're yeah. going to add like one plus one is two, and then multiply negative two by two. So if we're find, trying to find two numbers, it would be negative two times two. Uh, and so negative two times three, uh, what, over four, or over, over so what? We're So you're going to, uh, top and bottom or what? Yeah, okay, so you're going to make this fraction bigger. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what you were trying to say. So if you, if, like, so right now there's no integers in between negative one and negative two. If there was, if this was negative three, well, then you just pick negative two, that's between negative one and three, let's say. But what you can do is you can write equivalent fractions, which is what you're going for, equivalent fractions. So let's make them bigger. You could multiply both top and bottom by the same number again on both sides, and you could pick any number, like two or three or four, whatever. So if you pick two, I'm gonna multiply both these by two, this one over here by two as well. So if you make them a little bit bigger, 
this is going to be negative 4 over 8, which is the exact same as negative 2 over 4, which is the exact same as negative 1 over 2. But I just write it a little differently. This one is now negative 2 over 8. And when you make these bigger uh, equivalent fractions, now you can see that there is a number between negative 2 and negative 4, namely negative 3. And of course, you'd keep it over 8. And that is one, uh, uh, that's a des or a fraction between here. So negative 3 over 8. Okay. So negative 3 over 8 is a fraction. How do I make that into a decimal? Well, you could just get your calculator out and divide into a decimal, which would be totally fine. Um, what you could also do is try and make this denominator into a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000, something like that, that, you know, like, so you can write them as the decimal places. Um, 8 doesn't multiply, you know, uh, up to 10 easily. doesn't multiply up to 100 easily. It does multiply up to a thousand, um, but you know that. So that might be the only way you can do it because, yeah, if you weren't allowed to use your calculator at all, <laughs> you might you might say, okay, eight times. Let's see what what gets uh, to a thousand. Eight times what gets to a thousand? What's a thousand divided by eight? It is very good. Very good. If you multiply 125 times 8, you get to 1,000. And, of course, what you do to the bottom, you'd have to do to the top. Again, this gets a bit tricky, but not too bad. 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 25 is 75. So this is negative 375 over 1,000. Now, why did we pick 1,000? Because in our decimals, this is the tenths spot the hundredth spot, and this is the thousandths spot. So guess what? I have 375 thousandths. I put a negative on there, and there's your decimal. Now, that, if that was a bit whoosh, over your head, okay, don't worry too much about it. But like I say, if you can get this number, if you can multiply it up to 10, that's easy to make a decimal out of there. If you can multiply this bottom number to 100, that's easy to make a decimal out of. If you can multiply it to 1,000, that's easy to make the decimal out of. Um, and so those you might want to try some of those. But we also could just put that into our calculator as well. So if you're allowed a calculator on your test, which you probably will be for my test, but you just do this, and then there you go. There's your decimal. Okay? All right. Any questions about any of this so far? Any questions? Okay, you guys are doing great. You're paying really good attention here. Uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's do number, uh, letter B, a decimal between this pair now. Boy, this looks pretty tricky. What number is between 25 and 26? Boy, that's tough, eh? <coughs> uh, again, if we take the smallest one, which this is actually the smallest one, right? Because you go from 0 and you, go, you count up to in the negative here. So this is 0 0.25. And here is negative 0 0.26, right? So if we take, if we take, um, now, oh, sorry. This is technically the smallest one. But when we add a number, like we suggested before, we want to go from this one, and we can put a number onto this, right, to make it go this way. So this is the smaller number on the number line. But we can add some numbers here to make this in between. So that's why drawing a number line might be a good idea here too. But <clears throat> if I go negative 0.25 and I add just a tiny little bit, I can get a decimal in between. So you can go 0 0.25 and then you just add any number here, like another 5, let's say. And that is right between 0.25 and 0.26. That's right there. All right. I won't make you turn it into a, to, to um, fractions. You, you just know that you can add some numbers to the end of the um, of the one uh, on the in the negative. You got to want to take this one and add numbers to get kind of bigger, right? But makes it actually smaller. So negatives are tricky. That's why there's a lot of negative uh, examples here. Hey, okay. Okay. Any questions there?
All right. Okay, let's, uh, I, I want you to do 4A on your own right now, okay? Do 4A on your own right now. Um, go ahead and use some of the, some of the uh, direction that we d talked about yesterday, right? In the fractions, comparing fractions, common denominator is a really, really good one to do. Uh, so go ahead and, and do A on your own right now, and then I'll show you uh, how I did it in a few minutes. All right, fraction method. Watch closely. Fraction method. What I want to do is I want to get a common denominator. So I, first of all, multiplied top and bottom here by 4, which I saw many of you did, and over here, top and bottom by 3 to get over 12. And I saw some of you get stuck right here, and I understand why. Because with this new fraction, you still don't have an integer in between negative 8 and negative 9. So I get it. But what you can do is you can go ahead and do the same thing you did at the beginning. Try multiply both fractions by 2 to make another equivalent set of fractions. So what happens here? Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 over 12 times 2, 24. So if you do this again, now you have an integer in between these numerators here. So Guess what? My integer or my fraction would be negative 17 over 24. And that's just one. If you multiplied by a different set of numbers, you would have you would have might have had a, a bit of a different fraction, but that's the one that I got. Okay? So you could multiply both top and bottom here right away by 10 if you want, right? If you multiply both top and bottom at the very beginning by 10 then you would have lots of numbers in between the two numbers on top. Okay? Uh, decimal, the decimal way, yeah, you could change each of these to a decimal, but then it says identify a fraction, so you'd have to turn that decimal into a fraction. Okay? Let's take a look at B. Okay, some of you did B already. Let's take a look at B. So if, again, if you want to get the common denominator, you don't have to get the lowest common denominator. You don't have to. Um, you could multiply each of these, like I said, by 10. So yeah, that's easy to do, right? Just add a zero to each number. So this is 50 over 20 and 70 over 30. Now we've made them really big, but we don't have a common denominator. So you could do that, but if you don't have a common denominator, it's still a little tricky just to compare the top. So now what do we do? Well, now you can get a common denominator if you want and multiply this by 3 and this by 2. And what do you get? On the bottom, you get 60. And on the top, you get 150. And again, you can multiply by some different numbers at the beginning if you want. This is just one way that I did it here. And this is 140 over 60. Okay, So we got a common denominator, but we made that denominator pretty big so that we can see that we have lots of options now in between this top number. So a decimal in between here, pick any number between 140 and 150. 143, let's say, over 60. Now, some of you might do this. Oh yeah, 143, that's my answer. That's not correct. It's not 143, it's 143, for, don't forget, it would be over 60 in this case. Okay. And if you turn these to a decimal, you could find a decimal in between and then turn that back into a fraction. You could totally do that. Okay? But you, could, you got to know how to do it this way. Okay, any questions at all? Okay, I will give you the rest of your assignment here. <laughs> okay, so there's the rest of your assignment here. Uh, 3.1, page 100, math makes sense. Pearson, math makes sense. Any questions? Okay, go ahead and work on your assignment. Let me know if you have any trouble with anything. But yeah, this page was uh, part two. And uh, part one, we took a look at yesterday here, 3.1.